The number of illegal immigrants in this country is having significant economic impact. Inflation, taxes, housing, and school costs are all affected by the rising tide of immigration, both legal and illegal. Some estimates of immigrants in the U.S. illegally run as high as 20 million, nearly twice the official estimate, making immigration's impact on the underground economy even tougher to quantify. The scene on this street in New York City is typical of many major cities in the U.S. that are now home to large influxes of immigrants, both legal and illegal. Most Americans know a lot about immigration and have a solid position for or against it, but what they don't know is how it contributes to the nation's underground economy. Part of the reason this impact is so hard to quantify is that even the U.S. government doesn't have a reliable tally on the number of immigrants or their economic impact. Bear Stearns Senior Managing Director Robert Justick conducted a study on the underground economy in 2005. The Census Bureau several years ago estimated that there were 8.5 million undocumented residents in the United States. It became obvious to us that that number was quite low. Being a student of New York City for many, many years, I noticed that uh, there were neighborhoods that were previously empty, teeming with people. There were more people living in individual single houses being split up into uh, two and three family houses. The school populations in all the boroughs were going up drastically when they should have been falling. It was also very noticeable that the makeup of the labor force was changing. This change in the labor force has many economic consequences. Illegal immigration probably increases the underground economy by about $50 billion a year. Probably about half of the illegals are working off the books and in the gray market economy. And so they, they add that to the economy, but they also draw a similar amount in wages. So they aren't necessarily uh, benefiting the average American by the fact that they're working here. All economic projections by the government depend on accurate numbers. If the numbers are off, it's serious. The number of people we count is important because it affects productivity, it affects the employment rate, the unemployment rate, it affects projections for um, funding, for state, local government funding, and it projects revenue flows. The Bear Stearns study also said that understated payroll numbers make the economy look better than it really is. It affects productivity. Productivity is simply the output divided by the number of workers. So when we have workers that are off the books and are not being counted, but the output is being counted, um, it makes the inflation number look actually lower than it is. The underground economy even affects the wages of American workers, according to the Bear Stearns study, which said the large infusion of the imported labor supply has reduced average annual earnings by 4 to 6 percent. The impact is much more marked on low-income American workers. The problem is the people that do face job competition from immigrants are generally the poorest paid. They're people who don't have a high school education. They're native-born Americans who, say, have a high school education but work in jobs like food service and preparation or building, cleaning, and maintenance occupations, relatively low paid. There's a huge difference between low-skill immigrants, those that don't have a high school degree, and about 60% of illegals don't have a high school degree, and higher-skill immigrants who have a college degree. Economists also believe much of the money earned by illegal immigrant workers is not being spent in the U.S., but sent back to other countries, adding to the government's inability to track this underground economy. The Inter-American Development Bank said Mexico received $23 billion, mostly from the U.S., in 2006. Aside from oil exports, that's Mexico's largest source of foreign income. The study also found that undocumented immigrants are gaining a larger share of the job market, some 8% of all those employed. Immigration is a plus to certain economic interests, particularly employers who rely on low-wage labor. The National Research Council in a recent report said immigrants may be adding as much as $10 billion to the economy each year. Mostly people from uh, Mexico or El Salvador. Jamaica's are good. The Mexicans are the best workers. But we need those workers too. You couldn't get anything delivered in New York City. You couldn't get any food. 
and like they're having a problem in upstate New York, farmers can't get anybody to pick their crops. It's probably a, a good thing um, that they're here. You know, keeps the economy going. But there are major costs, too. The Center for Immigration Studies found that the costs of illegal immigration in terms of government expenditures for education, criminal justice, and emergency medical care are significant. California has estimated that the net cost to the state of providing government services to illegal immigrants approached $3 billion during a single fiscal year. About two-thirds of the children in the illegal immigrant families are themselves born in the United States and thus have welfare eligibility like any other population. When we look at the data the Census Bureau collects, we find that, in fact, a very large share of the children of illegal aliens are enrolled in Medicaid, do get free school lunch, and a host of other social services. Even the illegals take police and fire protection, and because they're low wage, they don't pay much in taxes. So even the illegals, who are not eligible for a lot of formal benefits, are still a drain on the taxpayer. The legal ones are a huge drain because they receive all kinds of government services throughout their lifetimes and through the lifetimes of their children while paying very little in taxes. The best way to think about this is that each high school dropout who enters the country, either uh, legally or illegally, on average, if they bring a family with them, and most do, is going to cost the taxpayers about a million dollars net.